Hi everybody, we're here on the floor of the 2013 Tokyo Hobby Show. I am Scott Hards. And I am Brian Keeney. And uh, we actually got a little splaining to do. There's actually two big hobby shows uh, this year. Uh, there's this one here, the Tokyo Hobby Show in September, and uh, the, another larger hobby show coming uh, in October. So, two big shows. What do you think of that, Scott? I think it's crazy, Brian, and it makes it really inconvenient for guys like us to cover two shows, to be honest. It does. Uh, but yeah, basically this show has all of the radio-controlled booths, plus Tamiya, because you know we usually uh, cover Tamiya from the perspective of scale kits, but probably 70 to 80% of their sales, let's face it, is RC stuff. So that's why they're here. Uh, we've also got uh, Zoke Mura and Ebro and some of the other uh, scale guys here. Uh, but most of the scale kit manufacturers are going to be at the show next month, which will be out at Makuhari. There was a little bit of a political thing. They couldn't figure out you know, who was going to be at what show. So this year, and hopefully this year alone, there are two fall hobby shows. But next year, I understand it's already going to be back to one. So uh, let's take a look around. We're standing here in front of Tamiya. They probably got the most interesting stuff for our, our audience. So let's go take a look. Howdy folks, it's your modeling buddy Brian here from Hobby Link Japan here at the uh, 2013 Tokyo Hobby Show at the Tamiya booth and I am sitting in an honest for goodness real uh, M561 Gamma Goat. It's a very cool vehicle and the Tamiya has just come out with an all new model kit of the Gamma Goat which I can show you right here in 135th scale. The M561 Gamma Goat was a, an all purpose uh, vehicle for carrying all kinds of stuff, super articulated, six wheel, six wheel drive. And I'll show you the particulars of the kit over here in a second. They got the kit built up over here, and I'll take you over there right now. All right, now here we are. Uh, I was just in the real M561, and here is the kit of it, Tamiya's new kit. So you can see here, it's an unpainted one. We got a couple uh, fully finished ones over here. Uh, it's articulated by via the technology of polycaps. I don't know if you can see in there, but uh, the detail is very much like the actual vehicle. Uh, now this kit comes with, as you can see here, it's got a figure driver figure in a very natural realistic pose um, all the all the tires roll and turn as they would uh, this was a six by six vehicle so you got you got all the differentials for the three different axles uh, very detailed under there and let's check out some other stuff around here I'll put this down here right there so here's some fully finished versions uh, now this vehicle was actually developed uh, during the Vietnam War but it never actually saw action in Vietnam it wasn't uh, finished in time uh, to be deployed uh, but it was used in the, um, the invasion, 1983 was it, of Grenada that the U.S. did uh, back in 1983. And uh, this vehicle did play a part in that military operation. So this version has decals for the Grenada version. Now you see down here, this is the breakdown of the sprues, uh, all the suspension parts, clear parts, obviously, decals. You see the parts for the figure there. And uh, interestingly, you can see a lot of the details molded in there. You've got, this is one of the, this might be the rear part, I guess, uh, with the suspension and the differential all molded in there so uh, a lot of detail but not a lot of parts because it's all all molded in there very nicely so that this is the m561 gamma goat and this is actually on sale now you can get it at hobby link japan came out in september now moving down a bit here well first of all if you want to come up here we got this stunning diorama made i guess this is the the this is a diorama of the invasion of grenada and you see a gamma goat so three four gamma goats actually coming on the beach there uh with i guess that's the uh, m151a2 jeep up there which leads me to the next topic here, is down here you can see, this is the U.S. utility truck Jeep uh, M151A2. This is a Grenada 1983 invasion version. Now this is, uh, Tommy I previously released this kit, but here's a, some sprues of some additional parts to make it the Grenada 1983 version. Uh, so this will go great with the Gamma Goat, because as you can see here, uh, they both operated at the same time in the same place. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another nice release, kind of a re-release with some new parts, is the m 151 a1, uh, this is the Vietnam War version, and you see here Tommy has created new parts uh, to make that version, um, some different parts. I think there was a difference between the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marines version. Some have these hooks, some do not have these hooks. They go on the rear portion of the Jeep there, the vehicle there. Ah, uh, canvas top and all that, so new parts for that. So this is the new uh, M561 Gamma Goat and some related releases, uh, the M5151A2 and a Vietnam War version, the M51A1, uh, all coming from Tommy. Every few years, Ferrari shakes up the supercar world with their latest limited supercar and the LaFerrari uh, in the tradition of Ferrari supercars. Uh, certainly generates opinions about its design like they all do. Um, if anybody out there is ready to give me a Ferrari, I think I'll take the 458 personally. Although I know this guy at, what is it, 860 horsepower is probably going to beat the 458 easily. 
Uh, but what a glorious, glorious model Tamiya has produced here. Uh, as some of you who, who watch us regularly may know, uh, last year I spent quite a bit of time, too much time, uh, with Tamiya's kit of the LFA from Lexus. Uh, and one of the reasons that kit took me so long to build is because it had so many parts. Um, you look here, and just, uh, I don't have an official figure for you, but I would say that this new Tamiya LaFerrari kit probably has 30% fewer parts at least uh, than the LFA did, but they haven't skimped on any of the areas of the car that they're recreating here. You have full engine detail, full exhaust detail, full suspension detail, full body detail, and not only that, on this kit, the doors and the engine cowling all work after assembly. You can open the doors, open the engine cowling, and show off all of that marvelous interior detail you've spent so much time creating. That actually is one of the problems with the, uh, the LFA kit, is that you spend a lot of time on interior detail, which isn't visible later, but on this kit, that's not gonna be an issue. You can show off the whole glorious thing. In fact, they've taken the concept of showing interior detail one step further. Uh, we have a, a half-built version of it here. The new LaFerrari La has some kind of a, uh, a hybrid KERS system, an energy recovery system, which uh, the Ferrari calls high KERS, uh, and it's hidden in the underside of the car, uh, but Tamiya chose to do that part of the underside in clear parts. If you want to, you can actually show off the radiators and some of the other detail uh, from the onboard high KERS energy recovery system. So that's kind of a, a, an interesting uh, approach to, to a kit design, to be sure. But yeah, as usual, uh, a brilliantly designed uh, engine that's, that looks like art as much as performance. Uh, and you can show it off brilliantly in this new kit. And of course, if you want to detail it up, for those of you who won't skimp, they have a, uh, a photo etch part set here as well that's coming out, along with the kit that will uh, let you get all of the grills and, and the other details, just like on the real car. So yeah, for Ferrari fans, this is certainly going to be the definitive model of Ferrari's new definitive supercar. What was that? you don't want to spend all that time on a model of a LaFerrari that doesn't even move on its own? Okay, well, we got you covered. Uh, Tommy has got their new uh, LaFerrari in the 10th scale electric RC series coming out as well. Uh, as you can see, it looks gorgeous. Uh, who do they get to paint these things? I don't know, because I can never get a paint job to look that good. Uh, but it's a really nice job. Uh, of course, it's going to be on uh, their TB04 or TT02 chassis. Uh, the kit that comes with uh, the chassis is the TT02. Uh, that'll be 13,440 yen, but you'll have to put it all together and paint it yourself. But of course, that's the fun part. Uh, if you're not in the mood to do that, they'll be coming out with a completely pre-built version as well for the low, low price of 28,140 yen uh, in November. So if you don't want to spend all that time, you can get one that works right out of the box. Or if you'd rather uh, make it look great yourself, you have that option too. And it also, as a separate parts option, they have the LED light unit coming out, uh, which will provide headlights for the car as well as tail lights. Uh, which automatically work based on uh, you know whether you're breaking the car or not, uh, and that's also very cool. So I don't know. I hope these uh, these door mirrors are on there really strong because the way I drive these RC cars, they probably wouldn't stay on very long. Well, that's the uh, the new one tenth electric RC LaFerrari from Tamiya. At the Tamiya booth, checking out a very important release. This is the first one sixth scale big bike kit that Tamiya has released in about 17 years, I think it is, and they've done it in a big way. This is a one sixth scale Harley Davidson Fat Boy Low which is a very cool bike. I'm not much, to be honest, I'm not much into bikes, but if I had a bike, I think I would get this one because this is a really cool bike. Uh, amazing parts break down here, as you're seeing the sprues all uh, broken down here uh, from the matte, uh, matte semi-matte chrome finish of the, of the wheels here, which really match the real bike, which if I step back, you can actually maybe pan over a bit and see the actual real bike there. And back over to the kit. So we got the built up over here. It looks exactly like it. Uh, this is coming out in November for the price of 22,050 yen, but worth every yen of that because it's an amazing. We're checking out the frame here. Uh, one point here is uh, this: the belt is from RC Car Belts and is an exact replica or an exact uh, dead ringer for the belt that's on the actual bike. And you see here the cylinder heads are broken down like this, the assembly, so you can get an absolutely realistic uh, representation of, how, of the cooling fins, as you can see on the kit here, of the bike, of the real bike. And just an amazing parts breakdown. Lots of uh, different varieties of chrome from a uh, full-on shiny, shiny chrome for some of these parts here to matte chrome to replicate a lot of the engine parts uh, that aren't really that shiny type chrome. And everything else is molded in black. So it's a pretty amazing kit. Now there's also going to be a detail part set 
uh, as you come over here. Uh, this is going to be sold at the same time. Uh, no price on this one yet, but it's coming out at the same time. It's all metal, uh, turned aluminum parts there uh, for the brake discs and uh, the mufflers and some other parts. I think those are parts for the front fork. And as you can see in here, we got springs and everything in the front fork parts there. So an incredibly detailed kit of the Harley Davidson Fat Boy Low. Again, this is the first 1/6 scale big bike kit from Tamiya in 17 years. So we're pretty excited to see this. And that's the big bike news from Tamiya. Well, of course, we're here in the Tamiya booth again. And uh, when you're looking at 70 second scale aircraft kits from Tamiya, you have to be careful because they do import a lot of Italeri kits and put them in Tamiya boxes. And some of those get overseas as well. But this is definitely not an Italeri kit. This is a brand new tooling from Tamiya of the Zero Model 32. Now the 32, of course, is famous for having the clipped wing tips, as you can see in, in both the versions here. Uh, the 21 that's famous from the Pearl Harbor attacks and the 52, the final version of the Zero, all had the rounded wing tips, which is also kind of the aircraft's trademark. So it, it kind of loses a little bit of its zeroiness, you know, when you, when you chop the wing tips like that. They're hoping to improve the aircraft's roll rate and speed, but it, it turned out that uh, apparently the, uh, the drag created by the chopped wing tips uh, probably uh, caused the aircraft to not be uh, as increased in performance as they thought, so they went back to the rounded wing tips for the 52. Um, the aircraft itself aside, let's look at this model. Oh my goodness, we have some detail here, and this is almost hard to believe that that is 70 second scale detail because they've gone all out and uh, are giving the resin guys almost no room to work there because that is just an, an unbelievable cockpit with all of the side panels and hardware and everything beautifully molded, uh, as well as, of course, that Sakai engine up front. So for 70 second scale aircraft buffs, I think there's uh, certainly no question that if you're doing uh, a clip wing zero, this is the one you're going to want to do. All right, we're here at the Tamiya booth, and in the special corner of the Tamiya booth, uh, there's a selection of products from Raupen Models. Now, Raupen Models is the company of a former Tosca uh, designer, uh, Mr. Yamada. Hello, Mr. Yamada. Thank you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to see you here. Uh, so his, his new company, Raupen Models, is uh, starting off by doing these fantastic uh, Link, Indie Link workable track sets. Uh, they already have on sale now a set for the Type 90 Japanese tank, uh, two types actually. They have the, uh, similar to this one, the no-pad and the padded version. Now, he's also now developing a set for the brand new Type 10 main battle tank. And as you can see here, uh, this is the no-pad version. Now, there's actually three types for the Type 10 tank. There's the initial C1 type that was used on the prototype in some of the early production models. And then now there's the C2 type track, which is uh, down here and that's no pad, and then there's the C2 track with pad. Uh, now the Tamiya kit that just came out has the C1 type track, which is used again on some of the prototypes and on some of the early production models, uh, but mostly what you'll see on the production model will be the C2 type tracks, either with pads or without pads. So I can also show you that this is a, these are very nicely done, very highly detailed, and very, very workable, as you can see here. So I'm rolling it on here. Um, and you can see the sprues down here. They're multiple pieces. It's a double pin just like the real track. Uh, so you get the absolutely realistic curves going around the bends there as, as both parts, as the, you got the link in the middle and the coupler. Oh, that's so very, very nice. So this is excellent detail. Yamada san, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So some track sets from Raupen Models. Taking out some more great releases at the Tamiya booth. Uh, starting down here, this one's been on sale for a little while, uh, the much awaited Type 10. Uh, JGSDF main battle tank. Uh, it's been on sale for a little while now, selling very well. Excellent detail. You're probably seeing it around built ups on a lot of different sites and in different magazines. So it's another excellent kit by Tamiya. Coming up here a little bit, we've got a, a Tamiya Italeri collaboration. Uh, this is the German, the Italian German 508 CM Colonial staff car. Uh, the car parts are by Italeri, and then Tamiya has included uh, some different parts like this cover and some figures and stuff like that to make it a special Tamiya Italeri collaboration. Uh, over here is a Masterbox Tamiya collaboration. We've got the LRDG command car with some great figures by Masterbox, which makes some excellent, excellent figures. Now down here is some good news. These are some re-releases of some uh, Tamiya kits from the past. It's nice to see these back. Uh, we've got the, the M60 series, the A1, the A2, and the A3, all very popular armored vehicles, U.S. armored vehicles here. Now the only difference in these kits from the past issues is uh, they come with uh, what are called here elastomer, 
elastomer tracks that can be glued and painted. Some of the, the tracks in the older releases of these kits uh, were vinyl material and really couldn't be glued and had a hard time holding paint and uh, some, some people had some problems with that. But now it's made of this elastomer and can easily be painted and easily glued together, so no problems there. And uh, these kits are, are you know, from, from decades ago, but they still hold up very well. The detail is excellent. And as Tammy has always been, easy to assemble and make really great kits. Now we're gonna move over here a little bit further. If I can move Kaneko-san over a little bit. Kaneko-san, konnichiwa, sumimase. Kenki desu ka? Hai, kenki desu. Oh, hai. Yon pachi wa ikka desu ka? Yeah, very cool. Okay. So, oh, by the way, this is an uh, um, uh, amazing Japanese modeler, uh, Mr. Kaneko, and he just happened to be here. Ikinari uh, interview, uh, sorry for the, we had a quick gorilla interview with him here. Uh, I was just asking him what his thoughts are on the, the 48 scale uh, BA64B, an all new 148 scale kit coming from Tamiya, and he says he likes it. It's nice and small and cute. Uh, it almost looks like it's 172nd scale, it's so small. Uh, but this is, and actually you can see there's a 48 scale figure right in, right in there. Kori kara kono shoujin de jiorama o tsukuru yote arimasu ka? Vehi tsukuru kara desu ne, chisa na, binetto na, binetto na. I was asking if he had any plans on incorporating this in one of his fantastic dioramas, and he said, oh yes, of course. Uh, he likes the small size because you can incorporate it in a small vignette, not unlike this winter version there. Ah, so he's got all kinds of cool stuff. And in other releases, uh, we've got some guys on bikes over here, British paratroopers and bicycle sets, and all kinds of cool stuff. So, lots of great new releases from Tamiya, and the Kaneko san arigatou So at the Tamiya booth, and uh, as you know, Tamiya had, re had released the 135th scale Type 10 main battle tank not too long ago to rave reviews. It's an excellent kit, and it did not take them long at all to get out, to put out the radio control version. As you can see here, it moves very realistically. It's got a nice uh, proportional uh, radio controlled system there fires kaboom and you can see it just hit this t-34 it's kind of an unfair fight we got the type 10 going up against an old t-34 here but do you see they both have uh, the tamiya tank battle system uh, which actually with this kit it comes as part of the kit and this kit is coming out in november for the price of uh, 34,440 yen. so it's going to be out soon now you can see here they got the top off of it here uh, it's got the turret rotation me uh, turret rotating mechanism there it runs on four I think those are triple A's. Yeah, triple A batteries there. Double A's maybe. Uh, and it's got this the regular um, one piece final or elastomer tracks there that work really well. So it's got all the detail of the stunning 135th scale kit and all the cool action of a, of a Tamiya RC tank kit. So this is very, very cool. Now Tamiya is known around the world, of course, for its plastic models, which we just had a, had a good look at. Uh, but also, Tamiya is very popular around the world for its mini yonku, mini four-wheel drives. Uh, particularly, based on our experiences, Malaysia and Indonesia are just crazy about uh, mini four-wheel drive cars. So they've got a huge selection. These are great fun for, for adults and children alike. Uh, all the events I've been to, you see a lot of uh, father and son teams that are running these things. And you see a lot, of, you see some mother and daughter teams as well. Father and daughter, mother and son. Uh, all kinds of combinations. So mini four-wheel drive is very popular. Uh, and another huge part of Tamiya's business, of course, is radio-controlled cars. Uh, you, they always have a huge selection, and uh, this shows no difference. Uh, we've, we've got some, uh, some Porsches, some trucks, uh, and of course, uh, some LaFerraris uh, that we'll be showing you as well. So, Mini Yonku, Mini four-wheel drive, actually, and uh, RC car. Tamiya, of course, puts out a lot of great uh, kits that you can build, but they also build a lot of their own great kits. Uh, for those of you who don't have the time or the patience to put them together yourselves. Fine selection of motorcycles up here. Uh, all completely assembled, completely painted. Uh, down here we've got uh, Red Bull, the Red Bull Formula One car, uh, the historical Honda RA272 car. See there? Some cool Ferraris and whatnot in the back there. So, bikes, cars, and some military down at the bottom. Looks like they're coming out with uh, the Type 10 as a completely finished masterwork collection model. Zoke Mura has been building a lot of fans around the world over the last few years with their series of 30 second scale kits that include complete interior detail of the aircraft. And now, coming out later this year, we've got the Japanese Raiden, the late war interceptor that was built primarily uh, to rise quickly to high altitudes uh, and try to intercept the American bombers that were pounding Japan. Uh, the Raiden, known for its rather plump fuselage shape, 
uh, was uh, had great performance in terms of achieving its mission. They just didn't have the the quantities that they they really needed to, you know, turn back the invaders, so to speak. But holy cow, look at this kit! They 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 shot this in uh, clear plastic, so you could see the interior detail. But they assure me that everything that's on the actual plane is also on this model. No detail has been left out. And that even includes the control rods that lead from the cockpit back to the, the tail, uh, um, you know, uh, movable surfaces that uh, fly the aircraft. It's all here. So guns, magazines, fuel tanks, oil coolers, the engine, everything. It's all fully represented in plastic uh, in this kit. Now the actual kit will be shot in gray plastic like we can see over here. Uh, but you can see how they've broken down the parts to make it easy to build and also detail the cockpit. Uh, for people who like building kits like this, and of course they are quite a bit more work than a, a typical type 30-second scale kit, uh, it's going to be, I'm sure, a fantastic piece of, of modeling fun. So hopefully we'll see that before the end of the year. Now the other exciting thing that Zoe Kimura has been doing uh, is scaling down their 140 or 132nd scale kits into 148. Uh, and they've just come out with the Shinden, which is of course one of their very first 32nd scale kits, uh, the late war experimental uh, Japanese pusher aircraft, uh, which was eventually supposed to be a jet, but never quite made it that far. Uh, this is uh, already available in 48 scale, and they're announcing here at the show that they're gonna be doing their TA-152 uh, as well, which is also a very exciting project. Now, I'm not sure uh, whether the uh, interior detail is gonna be the same, but they've got uh, a display here comparing the detail on the parts for the, uh, the 32nd and the 48 scale Shinden, and it looks, uh, looks pretty good to me. So uh, again, for detail buffs, uh, it looks like Zoke Mura, a division of Volks uh, company, is gonna be the place to turn to for years to come. Oh, hi folks. You've caught me at a quiet moment here at the Ebro booth and I'm checking out this super cool 143rd scale model of the Kahin HSV-010. Now, if you know Ebro, you know they're famous for these immaculately detailed 143rd scale cars. This super GT car here, uh, GT cars, GT3, uh, a Nismo, Nismo Juke. How often do you see that? A Nissan Juke Nismo here, 143rd scale. They're not cheap, but my goodness, they are extremely well detailed. Uh, pre-built, pre-painted, ready to go uh, here at Ebro. Now they also have kits. You see this selection of kits up here. Uh, these are, what scale we got here? 120th, all these Lotus kits here that they've been coming out with. I think these were um, Ebro's first entry into the scale model kit thing, with these different Lotus types here. So if you're a fan of cars, you're a fan of race cars, you're a fan of Formula One, Ebro's got all kinds of great stuff for you. Hi folks, we're here at the 2013 Tokyo Hobby Show at the Woody Joe booth. Uh, HLJ carries the full selection of Woody Joe products, uh, so if you've seen them, you know that they make all kinds of cool Japanese cultural things, temples, shrines, and over here is one of their newest items. This is Tokyo Station. Now this is coming out at the end of uh, October uh, for the price of 70,000 yen, so it's not cheap, but it is absolutely beautiful. Now the story behind this is, this model is of the recently restored Tokyo Station. They just did a whole new restoration of Tokyo Station. So these part sections here are all new as, uh, as it appears now. But the interesting thing of it is, it's, it's, this is the most recent version of it, but it's also the original version. Tokyo Station was originally made uh, many years ago, which I don't remember how long ago that was. It's probably around here somewhere. Uh, but it was actually this same configuration. Uh, and then there were fires and things like that, and so it had changed over the years. But the recent restoration of Tokyo Station is as it is now, and this model represents that. So it's kind of like a double kit. It represents the original Tokyo Station that was or built originally and uh, the most recently restored Tokyo Station. Uh, so this is a great new product coming from uh, Woody Joe. It's in 1 3 50th scale, uh, and it's got, again coming at the end of October for 70,000 yen. So hang on, let's check out some more Woody Joe products over here. Checking out some more cool Woody Joe stuff over here. We got uh, an Edo Mikoshi. This is the, the, the little portable shrine that people washoi washoi carry around here. Um, and again, none of this stuff is inexpensive. That's 63,000 yen there, but my goodness, it's beautiful. And here's a, an all wood and metal and all like that. Uh, this is Osaka Castle, you see here in 1 1 50th scale. Coming around here, more castles. There's Himeji Castle, which is probably one of the most famous castles in Japan because uh, it's huge and it's beautiful and it's all original. A lot of castles in Japan aren't original anymore. Some of them have elevators and escalators. That's an all original wooden castle and that's a great model of it. Uh, this is, uh, what is this? Kofukuji Goju no To, the five-story pagoda. That's in Kofukuji. I've actually seen that one in real life. Here's the Yakushiji Toto. So it has 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, maybe. Uh, so all wooden kits here. And this is a Byodoin 
Odo. This is a very famous Japanese temple here in Japan. And this is 175th scale. Kokuho, that means it's a national treasure, this particular uh, temple. And this, this particular kit goes for 47,250 yen. Moving down a little farther, 1 150th scale Matsumoto Castle. Also a national treasure here in Japan. And uh, this one is Tsuruga Castle, 1 150th scale. This one's 23,100 yen. And then down here at the bottom, at the end of the line here, we have something called Shinmei Zukuri Jinja. So this is a shrine. And it's a rather simple design there, but uh, very beautiful and very well detailed. So Woody Joe makes some absolutely incredible models, uh, mostly wood with uh, different die cast metal pieces and things like that in there to build these stunning uh, models of these Japanese cultural heritage sites, castles, shrines, temples, and as we saw before, Tokyo Station. Uh, so be sure to check out all the great Woody Joe stuff we have on the Hobby Link Japan site.